This morning, the committee will examine communications, broadband, and competitiveness, and we look forward to hearing from the witnesses on how the United States measures up. On this front, the news is not all good. Just yesterday, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development reported that the United States had fallen to 15th in the world in broadband penetration. In some Asian and European countries, households have high-speed connections that are 20 times faster than ours for half the cost. While some will debate what in fact these rankings measure, one thing that cannot be debated is the fact we continue to fall further down the list. In the year 2000, the United States ranked fourth. Last year, we dropped to 12th. And just yesterday, we found out that we had slipped further to 15th. The broadband bottom line is that too many of our international counterparts are passing us by, and for this we are paying a price. Some experts estimate the universal broadband adoption would add $500 billion to the U.S. economy and create more than a million new jobs. Compounding the situation is the state of information and communication technology research. Today we see less of the visionary long-term research that took place at Bell Labs and resulted in the breakthrough technologies that made our communications industry the envy of the world. <laughs> Instead, competition has forced companies to focus on research tied to short-term returns. While this strategy may be good for the bottom line, it sacrifices any chance our nation has to operate at the test bed for new technologies and applications that will be developed in the new economy. In a digital age, the world will not wait for us. So it is imperative that we get our broadband house in order and our communication policy right. Part of the process of getting it right includes having a firm understanding of the scope of our challenge. To help these goals, we plan to introduce two bills shortly. First is the Broadband Data Development Act to improve broadband data collection at both the federal and state levels. Second, the Advanced Information and Communications Technology Research Act, which will promote innovation and will improve our commitment to basic research on information and communications technology here in the United States. While there are many issues on telecommunications policy that divide us, it is my hope that attention to these discrete issues, stronger communications research and more useful data about broadband can receive bipartisan support. We are pleased to have two panels. Our first panel consists of the President and Chief Executive Officer of Connect Kentucky and Connected Nation Incorporated, Mr. Brian Method. May I recognize Mr. Method? Chairman Inouye, Vice Chairman Stevens, Senator Dorgan, thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. Uh, it's, it's both an honor and a privilege. Uh, my name, as you said, Mr. Chairman, is Brian Method, and I'm the President and CEO of Connected Nation, a national nonprofit that has been working across the country with states and private sector providers and technology companies to close the digital divide, uh, of which you have, have just uh, spoken. Connected Nation is the parent company of Connect Kentucky, a, our Kentucky-based organization that has served as the demonstration project of sorts for Connected Nation. And it's the Kentucky story specifically that I'm here to share with you today. Three years ago, Kentucky faced a challenge that's common to all states in the country. The needs of the day called for applying technology to traditional and historic challenges, uh, such as healthcare and education and uh, government service delivery. And so we were talking and strategizing around the concepts of e-government and telemedicine and, and virtual education, distance education. 
so we uh, were struck by the reality of the situation at the time, and so we surveyed the landscape and realized that it was the basic building blocks, the foundation that was not in place in order for us to uh, successfully execute on these types of policies and these types of applications. And we realized that not only had Kentucky not, did we not have the, those basic building blocks in place, but relative to other states, uh, the Commonwealth was, was literally at, at the bottom of the barrel in, in a lot of instances, and in, according to a lot of indicators. And so we decided that we first had to take a step back and address those basic building blocks, broadband access, uh, general technology literacy, uh, the awareness of the importance of technology uh, at, at the most grassroots level in, in the actual use of technology. And so we determined to devise an extremely aggressive plan at that time, and we used the structure of a public-private partnership to ensure that uh, the strategies in our approach remain market-driven uh, in to the largest degree possible. And that was that has been uh, important over the, the life of, of the project. We established aggressive goals and tactics with this plan. The first one was that we would have full broadband deployment, full broadband deployment everywhere in Kentucky by the end of 2007. But we realized that we first had to understand where we were, and so we, we uh, evaluated the regulatory landscape at the time. We uh, began a series of, of in-depth demand-side studies, surveying consumers, surveying businesses on how they use technology, why or why they do not use technology. Uh, and then we also uh, looked at the supply side of the situation, an inventory of where broadband is available uh, across all types of providers in Kentucky, all types of providers, all types of different technologies. And the most important thing I can tell you about these maps, Mr. Chairman, is, is that they allowed us to, to do the inverse analysis and to look at the unserved areas and to focus our attention on how to address those unserved areas of Kentucky, those areas that did not have broadband. Second, we decided we needed to dramatically improve technology literacy and impact computer and Internet use specifically. Third, we wanted to affect a, local, a localized approach, and so we said we will create and form local leadership teams, what we have called e-community leadership teams in each of Kentucky's 120 counties. The bottom line is we wanted a comprehensive approach that accounts for both supply and demand realities, and one that relies on research to determine where we were at the start, where we needed to go, and to track our progress along the way. I'm glad to be able to, to sit here with you today and report very dramatic and, and positive results uh, that came from this work over the past two and a half years. In terms of broadband availability, uh, when, we, when we began, Kentucky was covered, uh, Kentucky was covered uh, to the degree of about 60% of households were able to access broadband. Today, 92% of households can access broadband, uh, and that that's, uh, represents roughly 550,000 households, over one and, one and a half million people, roughly. We're on track to reach that 100% goal by the end of this year in terms of broadband coverage. Broadband use at home, we've seen a 73% increase, and that's a data point that uh, to me is, is perhaps as significant, significant as the coverage aspect because we were, that's one of those indicators where Kentucky ranked near last in terms of household use, and so our growth rate in broadband use has actually led the nation and has allowed us to, to catch up with, with at least half the states in the country. PC ownership, computer ownership, has increased by 20% over the last couple of years relative to a 4% growth rate. We have those e-community leadership teams, those grassroots teams working uh, uh, on planning at, uh, at the local level in, in each of our 120 counties. Private telecom investment has reached an unprecedented level in Kentucky, and just over the last two years, We've seen at least uh, 650 million invested from the private sector, which is an amount, a level unprecedented in Kentucky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mufford. Uh, it's a very impressive testimony.